Hey everybody, this is Dr. Jason Barker with the Natural Athletes Clinic, and this is our third series talking about anemia. So now we wanna talk about how to diagnose it. So first thing I wanna say though that's really important is if you've got the symptoms of anemia and you think you're anemic, if you think you're iron deficient anemic, like I said, if you're fatigued, you're short of breath, your heart rate is elevated, you need to get tested first before you treat. Because those symptoms, like I said, they're very common in anemia, but they're also very vague and can have many other causes too. So please do me a favor and don't just start gobbling iron if you think you're anemic because iron, uh, while it's um, an important nutrient and it's very necessary, it also has a fairly narrow therapeutic window, meaning that it's easy to overdose on and easy to cause problems. And in fact, iron supplements are one of the, unfortunately one of the leading causes of death from overdose in little kids because they like to eat, chew on those little vitamins and too much iron is obviously really bad for them. So be very careful with the iron. But hopefully this video will help you get to understand that and then get you in for a blood test with your doctor if you're, if you're worried about it. So what test would your doctor run if you think you've got anemia or if he or she thinks you've got it going on? So you'll wanna get a CBC, which is a complete blood count. That's how we know how many red blood cells you've got. And it also tells us about the size and the shape of them. If they're little teeny red blood cells, more, more than likely it's caused by iron. Sometimes you've got larger red blood cells and that can be from not enough folic acid and B12, which is another type of anemia that's probably second, um, second in place as common as iron deficiency. So CBC, we'll get a hemoglobin, we'll look at something called ferritin, which is kind of like a storage form of iron, and then total iron binding capacity, and there may be some other tests that your doctor will run. But it's really important to get a good blood test done so we know exactly where the cause of that anemia is coming from, because like I said before, there's, there are many different causes for it. Um, so you wanna be thorough, of course, and know what you're treating. Um, so how else can we replace um, iron in our body without taking an iron pill? Now again, it kind of depends on how anemic are you and what's the situ situation. Some people, their doctor will tell them to take an iron pill. There's certainly nothing wrong with that. Like I said, we want to be sure that we're doing that the right way. Um, but food, so um, what I'd said before is that uh, iron from animal sources is a lot more abundant and it's also more bioavailable to us. So that just means that our bodies will absorb that iron that comes from animals more readily. So animals or animal sources that are rich in iron are clams and oysters, uh, liver, and um, beef and turkey, and I make a face with liver because I don't eat it and I never would and I don't expect you to, but it's a really rich source of iron and if you do eat it, more power to you. So those are animal sources, they're not the only ones. Um, and then plant sources for our vegan and vegetarian athletes are things like um, beans, lentils, nuts and seeds, and dark green leafies. So it's obviously very easy to get enough iron in a vegan or a vegetarian diet. You just have to really plan that diet out. You can't be um, not eating a lot of those foods because you will end up uh, deficient in iron. So now we talked about those foods, but then what if you are taking an iron supplement? What foods should you avoid if you're supplementing with iron? And there are several different food groups that you want to um, not take with that iron because iron's a mineral and there are certain chemicals that occur naturally in different foods that will actually hold on to that iron. So you'll take it and they'll hold on to it in your gut and they'll, it'll come right out. So you can wind up supplementing with something and not really absorbing it very well. So the first group, um, dairy products contain phosphates and those will actually slow um, some of that iron absorption. Second one are uh, dark green leafy, or I'm sorry, dark green leafies are rich in iron, but there's one particular dark green leafy that, will, that has oxalic acid in it, or a lot of that, and that's spinach. So you don't wanna take iron with spinach, it'll help pull it out. Um, things like beans. Beans contain phytic acid, which is also something that'll help bind up that iron and remove it. And then the last one, the most common, are things like uh, coffee, tea, and wine. They contain tannins or tannic acids, and that's what gives those drinks that bitter taste. So those are notorious also for pulling iron out of your body. Now, if you're iron deficient, does that, does that mean you should not eat any of those foods or any of those drinks? No, of course not. But you just need to be smart about 
if you're eating your iron rich meal you may not want to combine those foods with it and then you also don't want to go overboard on, on these things too you always want to err on the side of moderation right if you are struggling with iron deficiency um, that's something to keep in mind with all this okay and then the last thing that's most important when if you are supplementing with iron or even if you're eating iron rich foods is to take a little bit of vitamin C you don't need a whole lot of it just like a thousand milligrams with your iron supplement or with your iron rich meal and that will help greatly enhance the absorption of that iron so that your body holds on to it and then you can get that iron replaced and then stop taking the supplement and then more importantly feel a lot better because you're not anemic anymore okay i hope those uh, tips help you and thanks for watching and we'll talk to you guys again soon